Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want me to react to, let me know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and I'll be more than glad to do it. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we're putting out. Uh, we've got a podcast called Diving In with Fanny and Jesse. You guys can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we have a Patreon. You guys feel free to become members. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to 10 surprisingly halal things in Islam part 2. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. We're continuing our series of 10 surprisingly halal things in Islam and now we're on part 2. Welcome back guys to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and for this video I'm going to be looking at 10 things that are permissible in Islam. And like I mentioned in part 1, halal refers to how meat is prepared in Islam and it does not mean the opposite of haram. Just wanted to clear that up again. We'll be simply using that term in a more slang use of the word. So let's start off with halal thing number Number 10 and that is exempt from fasting. This is something that is permissible. Fasting during the month of Ramadan is mandatory for all healthy adult Muslims. However, children who have not reached the age of puberty as well as the elderly folk and those who are physically or mentally incapable of fasting as well as pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers and also even travelers are permitted not to fast. And this is supported in the Quran, Surah 2 verses 185 that says, The month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. So whoever cites the new moon of the month, let him fast. And whoever is ill or on a journey, then an equal number of other days. Allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardship and wants for you to complete the period and to glorify Allah for that to which which he has guided you and perhaps you will be grateful. Number nine has to do with praying. Did you know it is permissible for the travelers to shorten the four rakat salat to two rakats? And by the way, a raka is a single instance of movement and supplication that's performed by Muslims during prayer. Also what's permissible is joining the dur, which is the noon prayer together with the asr, which is the afternoon prayer. And also the maghrib, which is a sunset prayer together with the Isha, which is the night prayer. This is because in the Quran, it says this in Surah 4 verses 101. And when you travel throughout the land, there is no blame upon you for shortening the prayer, especially if you fear that those who disbelieve may disrupt or attack you. Indeed, the disbelievers are ever to you a clear enemy. Next thing we're going to look at is seeking omens. This point has been explained by Ibn al Qayyim. And he said in the hadith, Allah has prohibited seeking omens by drawing lots, but has provided the alternative of istikhara. Islam teaches that if the Muslim faces a problem, he should consult with others and seek guidance from Allah. The meaning of istikhara is to ask guidance from Allah in making a choice between two conflicting decisions. For this, there is a salat and a dua, which is a supplication for seeking Allah's guidance. So again, it is permissible if the omen that you're seeking is seeking guidance from others and also guidance from Allah. But like we mentioned in our Haram series, you can't go to people like witch doctors and psychics, things like that, no. Next up, let's talk about food. Islam is not oblivious to the pressures of life. It permits Muslims in need to eat a prohibited food in certain quantities that are enough to save their life. And the Quran, Surah 2 verses 173, it speaks about this and it says, He has only forbidden to you dead animals, blood, the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah. But whoever is forced by necessity, neither desiring it nor 
nor transgressing its limit, there is no sin upon him. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Let's also look at dead animals. There is some permissibility when it comes to them. Islamic law has exempted fish and whales and other sea creatures from the category of dead animals. When the Prophet Muhammad was asked about the sea, he replied, its water is pure and its dead are halal. Now in the Quran, Surah 5 verse 96, it says, lawful to you is game from the sea and its food as provision for you and the travelers, but forbidden to you is game from the land as long as you are in the state of Ihram. And fear Allah to whom you will be gathered. So we looked at five permissible or halal things in Islam. We also did do a video series about haram things in Islam. So I'll link to one of those videos below in the video description section. Also, if you haven't seen part one to this video, I do want you to see that one. So I'm going to also link to it below in the video description section as well. And I'll also put it in the card section of this video. It goes into a lot more information. So if you see this video and you're wondering why I haven't mentioned something, it's probably in part one. All right. So for number five, we talked about dead animals, but let's get a little bit further. There's permissibility when it comes to you using dead animals. The prohibition concerning the dead animal is limited to the eating of its flesh. One can, in fact, make use of its skin, its horns, bones, and hairs. And when it comes to this, Ibn Abbas narrated this in the Hadith. The freed maidservant of the Prophet's wife, Maymuna, was given a sheep and it died. The Prophet passed by its carcass and said, why did you not take its skin to be tanned and use it? They replied, but it is dead. The Prophet said, what what is prohibited is eating it. Hunting is also permissible, but there are some guidelines to it. Islam teaches that a hunter should not just hunt for fun, like taking the life of animal without intending to eat it or otherwise benefit from it. And the Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said this in the Hadith. If someone kills a sparrow for sport, the sparrow will cry out on the day of judgment. Oh Lord, that person killed me in vain. He did not kill me for any useful purpose. Again, according to the words of the Prophet Muhammad, in the hadith it says whoever kills a sparrow or anything bigger than that without a just cause Allah will hold him accountable on the day of judgment the listeners asked "O messenger of Allah what is a just cause he replied that he kill it to eat not to simply chop off its head and then throw it away next up at number three let's look at silk and gold so beautification is permitted in Islam and the Quran has this to say who has forbidden the adornment of Allah which he has produced for his servants and the good lawful things of provision. Say, they are for those who believe during the worldly life, but exclusively for them on the day of resurrection. Thus do we detail the verses for the people who know. And that's taken from Surah 7 verses 32. Islam has, however, prohibited two kinds of adornment for men while also permitting them to women. And these are the use of gold and gold ornaments, as well as as the second is clothing made of pure silk. In the Hadith, it's reported that the Prophet took some silk in his right hand and some gold in his left, declaring, these two are haram for the males among my followers. It's also very halal to live luxuriously. Muslims are free to adorn their house with various kinds of flowers and fabrics and other permitted objects. Muslims are also free to desire beauty in their home as well as elegance in their clothing and appearance. In the Hadith, it's recorded that the Prophet Muhammad said these words, anyone who has an atom of pride in his heart will not enter the garden. A man then asked, what about the one who likes to wear a handsome robe and good shoes? The Prophet replied, surely Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. So it's permitted to definitely look presentable and beautify your home, beautify your dress and everything, but just as long as it doesn't lead to vanity, where now you put yourself above others and put other people down because of your appearance and all the good luxurious things that you have. And finally, at number one, we have toys. This is something that I wondered about too, but toys such as dolls in the form of humans and animals, they fall in the permissible category. In the Hadith narrated by the Prophet's wife Aisha, this is what it says. I used to play with dolls in the house of the Messenger of Allah and my friends would come over to play with
with me. They would hide when they saw the messenger of Allah approaching, but he was in fact very happy to see them with me, and so we played together. In another hadith, Aisha also reported, one day the messenger of Allah asked me, what are these? My dolls, I replied. What is this in the middle? He asked. A horse, I replied. And what are these things on it? He asked. Wings, I said. A horse with wings? He asked. Have not you heard that Solomon, the son of David, had horses with wings? I said. Thereupon, the messenger of Allah laughed so heartily that I could see his molars. So the hadith also records the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, but also the silent testimonies. So because these things weren't condemned, Muslims believe that they are permissible. And that wraps up this episode of 10 Surprisingly Halal Things in Islam. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me hear your thoughts and comments down below about anything that I shared or any other information that you want to add. And this is part two. So if you want us to continue the series, also let me know down below as well. Don't forget to check out the recommended videos that I have for you below in the video description section. And also hit me up on social media. Until next time, guys, stay awesome, stay educated and I'll see y'all real soon. Very interesting video and for once I'm going to say all these 10 facts that he gave are actually new to me like I'll like I always say a certain videos are just about you learning something new and this was something new for me are you guys aware of these 10 facts I mean there are other facts that exist but did you know these ones and what are your contributions are there other ones that you want me to learn and yeah I would appreciate make sure you comment down in the comment section below educate me more otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with a friend and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video